Welcome to Scripting in Horizon Worlds. My name is Ava, and I'm a software engineer at Facebook helping to develop the scripting tools in Horizon Worlds. I'm so honored to be able to help you get started. In this series, we're gonna learn the fundamentals of the script gizmo, and then we will dive deeper into the tools and build a mini game. The Script Gizmo allows you to create dynamic and unique experiences. Horizon Scripting is based in 3D space and runs on individual objects. For a script to run, it must be attached to an object. If a script is attached to multiple objects, they will each run their own instance of the script. When you attach a script to an object, all of its variables will show up at the bottom of the property panel. This is where you can reference other objects and change the default values. Please note that most gizmos are also objects, including sounds, effects, triggers, and more. When you think about your scripts, ask yourself, when does the thing that you want to happen occur? This is where events will come into play. We have a large section of predefined events, including when the world has started, object collisions, enter and exit events, and many more. We can even get events from when a player presses one of their controller's buttons. For even more control, we can create custom events, and we can cause the event to go off on a delay or by sending an event to another object. Now that we know when something should happen, we can use a variety of code blocks in our event. There are endless possibilities, and one key to unlocking this power is using control code blocks like if and while. We'll be showing you more on how to use these in a later tutorial. The Motion tab allows you to move objects and players in your world. Objects have motion options that are both instant and those that take place over time. Please note that the move to, rotate to, and scale to code blocks define specific amounts to go to, whereas the by functions allow for relative adjustment. If we scroll all the way down, we have the ability to apply physical motion to objects that have physics enabled. Under player motion, we can respawn the player and also change the player's speed and gravity. Actions offer an incredible way to interact with your world and players, often connecting to visual effects, sounds, text, and other gizmos. You can also reset the world, play haptic feedback, and adjust a player's voice settings. Operators are extremely powerful, and I encourage you to learn these leisurely. We will have a PDF document and another tutorial series to help you master these code blocks. But seriously, take your time and don't feel like you need to know how to use all of them. The first section is logic, and this allows us to define parameters in our if and while control code blocks. And the most commonly used section is basic operations, which allow us to add, subtract, and manipulate values in our scripts. Further down, there are math operations, random numbers, lists, vectors, even object and player values. We will be visiting the Operators tab quite frequently, so I recommend taking a moment to look over this section and see what's available. Again, you don't need to understand everything, and we will talk about individual code blocks as we use them. The Value tab allows you to interact with variables using the set to code block. You can also interact with player variables and get all types of value inputs to use in your scripts. For debugging, you can print messages using the debug print code block. 
We also have the ability to convert non-string values into strings. This is useful for both debug printing and displaying text. Please note that a numerical value also needs to be converted to a string in order to be displayed as text. Variables have a lot of uses. They are great for changing values such as a timer or durability. They can also be used repeatedly throughout your script or even be saved for later. You can even use an object variable to reference another object. Remember, you can always get a one-time use value input from the values tab. Once a variable has been created, you can set the default initial value. This can always be changed from an individual object's property panel, allowing for unique variations. If you want to create a list, toggle the list option on. Please note, you will need to use the list code blocks found in your operators tab to add to the list and interact with it. You may have started to notice by now that there are a few different colors and shapes to the code blocks. Events are a lighter square shape. The darker square shaped code blocks can go inside of events and often have rounded pill slots, which are reserved for values and variables. Notice these values and variables are color coded to signify their type. There are also rounded code blocks, which get or manipulate values. These will fit into the pill slots as well. In the bottom right of the scripting panel, you'll see a capacity meter. As you build more complex scripts, you may start to notice that you reach the limits of a single script block. When this happens, Consider breaking routines into separate script gizmos, like a player manager, scoreboard, etc. Please note that the capacity inside a script gizmo does not affect your world's capacity. The script gizmo itself does not use too much, but for a script to run, it must be attached to an object, which can use up capacity quickly depending on the type of object. Great work so far. We've covered the fundamentals of scripting, Please feel free to refer back here anytime. In the next section, we will be building a mini game that counts flags. And when all of the flags are captured, a trophy will be displayed.